Hello viewers, welcome to the video lecture series of psychology. Continuing chapter 5, today we will be taking up the techniques of behavior therapy along with cognitive therapy. Let us look at the 7 techniques of behavior therapy. The first technique is known as negative reinforcement. Now in negative reinforcement and all the techniques we will be talking about the definition as well as the example so that you can understand it better. Negative reinforcement is following an undesirable response with a painful outcome, an outcome which is not liked. For instance, a child is reprimanded by the teacher and the child is sent out of the class. Standing outside the class, the child is missing the lecture and enjoying outside. So this is negative reinforcement where the child can escape and avoid a lecture and enjoy outside. So next time onwards, do you think the behavior is going to decrease or increase? Of course, it's going to increase. That is the whole concept of reinforcement. The behavior increases in future. The likelihood of that behavior increases in future. But because it's avoid and escape, that is why we call it negative reinforcement. Second is aversive conditioning. A repeated association of undesired response with an aversive consequence which results in the person giving up faulty behavior. For instance, an alcoholic person if given electric shocks or given medicines which cause nausea or discomfort is more likely to leave alcohol because of the aversive consequence. The third technique is known as positive reinforcement. In this technique, we link up the behavior with a positive outcome. So the response is linked up with a positive outcome and of course the likelihood of that behavior increases in future. For instance, associating a favorite dish with the study or homework or television. So the child is more likely to do the homework or studies if it is associated with a positive outcome that is positive reinforcement. Next technique that we have is token economy. Now tokens are given for change of behavior. So a behavior like a child who has to be taught some good mannerisms. The child is given a certain number of tokens. After collection of those tokens, those tokens can be exchanged for instance with an outing. So with those number of, it could be a star chart system followed for children also or for a disorder of schizophrenia, the token economy is followed where tokens are exchanged for a particular behavior. So behavior desirable one becomes reinforced. Next we have is modeling. We also call it as vicarious learning where a role model demonstrates a behavior and that behavior is copied because the consequences of that behavior are positive. So based on the observation and behavior of a role model, the changes start occurring. For instance, a child learns to lie because the parents were lying or the child learns to respect the elders because the parents were doing it. So parents are the role model for children. We call this as vicarious learning, learning by observation. Next we have is differential reinforcement. Now differential reinforcement is the use of both positive and negative reinforcement which we have used earlier. Positive, positively reinforcing a behavior and negatively reinforcing a behavior. So a desirable behavior is positively reinforced and a negative behavior is negatively reinforced. Similarly, we can also use ignorance for the unwanted behavior. The behavior we do not want the child to follow, we can teach it by ignoring that behavior. For instance, parents are taught to ignore when the child is sulking or crying or throwing temper tantrums. Uh, the child is not, the basic behavior of the child is not adhered to, the demand is not fulfilled. Whereas if the child asks politely, let's say for going for an outing, the parents listen to the child and take the child for an outing. So positive behavior which is desirable is reinforced through positive reinforcement and negative behavior either through ignorance or through negative reinforcement. The last technique that we have is known as systematic desensitization. Very important technique from the exam point of view. This technique was given by Volpe and Volpe talked about the construction of a hierarchy from the lowest fear to the highest fear. For instance, somebody is very scared of uh, cockroaches. So cockroaches, the uh, easiest, the lowest fear would be cockroach at a distance of one kilometer or at a long distance. Whereas the highest fear or the fear which makes the person panic will be cockroach in a coffee mug. So this hierarchy, the series of behaviors are constructed from the lowest fear, fear provoking event to the highest fear provoking event. After this behaviors are identified and the hierarchy is constructed, 
after that the person is taught relaxation so every event or every situation in the hierarchy is taken up the person is made to relax and the visualization is done by the therapist the therapist gives the instructions where the patient or the client can imagine the situation as if the person is in the situation so with that imagination and with relaxation automatically the person goes up in the hierarchy and the fear dissolves this follows the principle of reciprocal inhibition in this we understand the logic that anxiety and relaxation cannot occur at the same time fear and relaxation cannot occur at the same time so it is reciprocal inhibition where either of them will be there which will be reinforced and the other will be inhibited the opposite will be inhibited so this is the principle of reciprocal inhibition another fear could be hydrophobia fear, uh, phobia of water which can also be treated with the same technique after understanding behavior therapy which talked about behavior modification let's look at cognitive therapy which deals with the thought process so this therapy propagates that psychological distress is because of irrational thoughts and belief system the way we look at the situation the way we perceive a situation the way we understand a situation give meaning to it is it logical is it rational or is it my own creation the way my mind believes it so this is what cognitive therapy talks about let's look at the two sub therapies under it the first is rational emotive therapy propagated by albert ellis now albert ellis focuses on irrational thoughts that mediate between the triggering event or the antecedent event and its outcome now albert ellis gave a very important concept saying that it's our belief system it is not the triggering event or the outside situation which results in the feelings that we have or the behavior that we have that is the consequence so in this he analyzes the abc model the antecedent that is the outside trigger which results in the belief system the way we look at it the situation the way we perceive it the way we think about it and the consequence let's take an example for instance if a child feels that there's a thought in the child's mind i should not hurt my parents or i should be loved by everybody now in this situation it's a belief system which has should component in it it can have a should component it can have a must component i must top the exam now this is a belief system which is not rational which is not logical it may or may not happen which will obviously distort the present reality it will definitely create a negative mindset because if it doesn't happen the consequence will be a very low mood and depression so this is what is being worked on and uh, once we understand the abc charting obviously we can work on for instance a critical statement is given to a child so that you cannot do this particular task so effectively the child takes the statement so seriously and has a belief system which is triggered because of which the consequence he is actually not able to do well in that particular subject so in rational emotive therapy the person's thoughts are questioned in a gentle manner non directive questioning is used where without really probing or being directive the person is made to think deeper into the assumptions that he or she has about life and problems therefore once these are identified and questioned in a non directive manner the assumptions can be changed into a more realistic one which are more healthy second theory under cognitive therapy is aaron beck's therapy according to aaron beck who has really worked on anxiety and depression people having anxiety and depression and the psychological distress caused by that now according to aaron beck who focuses on the concept of core schemas core schemas are formed in childhood because the family the way the family reinforces certain belief system or action patterns in an individual because of those thoughts automatic thoughts are triggered schema is basically a core framework a cognitive framework which the person carries for instance a schema of a restaurant every each one of us carries a lot of schemas which are cognitive frameworks the mindset the set of thoughts that we have suppose a person is neglected a child is neglected by the parents and the child develops the core schema i am not wanted the moment this schema is there and there's a situation outside which triggers this core schema suppose the child is publicly ridiculed in school 
So, because of that ridicule, the schema is automatically triggered, resulting in the thought, I am not wanted. These are automatic thoughts which automatically start off because of that core schema being triggered. Now, these irrational thoughts which are continuous and obsessive uh, make the person believe that nobody loves me. These are characterized then by cognitive distortions which distort the reality in a negative manner and the person's makes the assumption so real, the person is so much under the influence of these assumptions that these thought patterns result in dysfunctional behavior. This repeated occurrence obviously results in anxiety and depression which is the base of this particular therapy which is cognitive therapy by Aaron Beck. This therapy utilizes questioning which is gentle, non-threatening and the client is answered, the, uh, the belief and the thought patterns are questioned. The client is asked why, for instance, there is a situation where the neglect is there or the person feels nobody loves me. So, the client is asked by the therapist, why should everybody love you? Now, that will make the person think about the irrational belief system or the automatic thoughts and the dysfunctional schemas that the person is carrying. Therefore, the person will be able to change it. Let's look at the concept of cognitive behavior therapy, which is a combination of behavior and cognitive therapy. It's the most popular, short and efficacious treatment for a variety of psychological disorders like anxiety, depression, panic attacks, borderline personality and all. So, this particular therapy uses a biopsychosocial model to understand psychopathology and handle it. It combines cognitive and behavioral techniques. Now, this therapy also has a basis in biological. So, biological because it deals with relaxation. It has a basis in psychological because it deals with cognitive change of thoughts, cognitive therapy and it also has a basis in social realm because it deals with environmental manipulation. So, let us summarize today's discussion. We talked about the concept of behavior techniques where we covered seven techniques. We also covered the concept of cognitive therapy under which we had Albert Ellis rational emotive therapy and Aaron Beck's therapy and we also understood the cognitive behavior therapy which is a very short as well as very effective treatment of mental disorders. That is about it for today. Thank you.